As SpaceX wraps up the Block 2 era of Starship, the company is now shifting its focus to the next generation. This version isn't just an upgrade. It's the foundation for some of SpaceX's most ambitious goals yet, potentially including the first crewed missions to the moon. Here's everything you need to know about the Starship Block 3. SpaceX's next version of Starship, already the world's largest rocket, is about to get even bigger and more advanced than any of the versions that have already launched from Texas. At least, that's the picture painted by billionaire founder Elon Musk and other SpaceX leaders as they prepare to retire the vehicle's second major design. The outgoing Starship version 2 wrapped up its run with a kind of cinematic comeback. Its final test flight from Starbase, SpaceX's massive facility near the U.S.-Mexico border, marked the company's fifth Starship launch of 2025 and its second successful one in a row, after three explosive failures earlier in the year. But today, the focus isn't on that ship. It's on the next-generation Starship that SpaceX says will be more powerful, more efficient, and capable of carrying more than ever before. So what actually makes a rocket powerful? In rocketry, power usually comes down to three things. How much thrust the engines can generate, how much mass the rocket can lift to orbit, and how efficiently it's designed to reuse or stage its components. Thrust is the brute force that pushes a rocket off the ground. Starship's Super Heavy Booster, fitted with 33 Raptor engines, produces around 72 mega Newtons. That's about 16 million pounds of thrust, more than twice the might of NASA's Saturn V, the rocket that once carried Apollo astronauts to the moon. For comparison, NASA's newer Space Launch System, SLS, generates roughly 39 meganewtons, or about 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust, while Saturn V topped out at 34 meganewtons, around 7.6 million pounds. Payload capacity is just as important since it defines how much the rocket can actually carry into space. In its reusable form, Starship aims to haul up to 100 metric tons to low Earth orbit, or as much as 200 tons if it flies expendably. That would surpass the Saturn V's 140-ton record and even the SLS, which can manage between 95 and 105 tons. In the latest details SpaceX has shared, the current Starship Block 2 can deliver around 35 tons to orbit, but the upcoming version 3, the one SpaceX is hyping as a true game-changer, is designed to hit that 100-ton target. So how does SpaceX plan to make such a massive leap in capability? While the outside of the Starship upper stage might look familiar, the new Block 3 version is a complete overhaul beneath the surface. During Flight 11, SpaceX spokesperson Dan Hewitt explained that this next iteration, Starship version 3, will stand about 5 feet 1.5 meters taller than its predecessor. We're also getting energy storage upgrades, tons of avionics changes, a lot of things that will enable longer duration missions, Hewitt said. One of the most noticeable updates is the addition of a docking adapter on the outside of the vehicle. These twin ports look a lot like the ones featured on SpaceX's space refueling pages, and that's exactly what they're for, letting two starships link up in orbit for propellant transfer. This capability is key to making lunar and deep space missions possible. Even though Starship is massive and carries a huge amount of fuel, most of that propellant is spent just escaping Earth's gravity. Orbital refueling will make it possible to cover the rest of the roughly 400,000 kilometer, quarter million mile trip to the moon, or even farther to Mars. But the upgrades don't stop there. Starship V3 also features new covers for the COPV tanks. Those are the super strong, lightweight composite overwrapped pressure vessels. While COPVs are incredibly durable, they can still be damaged if dropped or hit during handling. To prevent that, SpaceX has added orange metal jacketing, a segmented shell that locks together and has foam padding underneath to absorb shocks. Think of it as a tough, protective suit that keeps the tank safe before installation. Other visible tweaks include repositioned Starlink terminals, an updated catch pin design, and several changes to the internal welds. The new docking ports for orbital refueling are now clearly visible, and the heat shield sports a more refined, tapered edge around the vehicle. Interestingly, Starship no longer includes traditional lift points. It now relies entirely on the catch pin and stabilizer points for handling. The Super Heavy Booster for Block 3 is an absolute monster. 72.3 meters tall, packed with 3,650 tons of propellant, and capable of delivering a jaw-dropping 8,240 metric tons of thrust at liftoff. Starting from the top, the hot staging ring is no longer a separate piece. It's now built directly into the booster, with an open, truss-like design that looks a lot like what you'd see on some classic Russian rockets. The grid fins got a big upgrade too. They're now 50% larger and made from thicker, higher-strength, welded stainless steel. 
But the coolest part? The fins now have an integrated catch point. This is what allows Mechazilla's arms to lift and catch the booster. Unlike the Block 2s, which had separate catch pins below the fins, the new design builds everything right into the fin structure. It's a slick, more compact setup that should make recovery operations smoother and faster. You'll also notice there are now three grid fins instead of four. That's not a cost-cutting move. It's a result of what SpaceX has learned from 11 Starship test flights. They've figured out that the booster doesn't need four fins to maintain precise pitch control and stability. With just three, it still has all the maneuverability it needs, while shedding some unnecessary mass and complexity. Inside the Block 3 booster, things get even more interesting. There's a brand new, redesigned fuel transfer tube, and it's enormous. Roughly the same size as the entire first stage of a Falcon 9. This massive pipeline feeds cryogenic fuel from Super Heavy's main tank to all 33 Raptor engines. One of the biggest improvements here is that the new design allows all 33 engines to ignite simultaneously. In earlier versions, engine starts had to be staggered or sequenced to avoid overloading the system. Now, simultaneous startup means more balanced thrust, fewer ignition issues, and a much steadier liftoff. This upgrade also ties directly into the booster's flip maneuver during descent. With improved fuel delivery and thrust control, SpaceX expects faster, smoother flips and more precise landings, perfectly complex complementing those new grid fins and the integrated catch system. Both the upper stage Starship and the lower stage Super Heavy are getting an upgrade to the brand new Raptor 3 engines. Unlike earlier versions, Raptor 3 doesn't rely on a traditional external heat shield. In previous designs, you could see the engine nozzles while the thrust chambers and turbo pumps were tucked away inside separate firewalled compartments. That approach has been completely rethought. With Raptor 3, the cooling system is built directly into the engine itself. The components now have integrated cooling circuits that snake through the thrust chamber, turbo pump, and just about every major part. This means there's no need for extra shielding. The engine essentially cools and protects itself. From the outside, it looks cleaner and more streamlined than ever, but internally, it's far more sophisticated. With intricate cooling channels that boost both structural strength and thermal efficiency, there is a trade-off, though. Because Raptor 3 engines are now fully exposed during descent, they take the full brunt of the heat and plasma generated during re-entry. That's why any delicate or unnecessary external components, anything that could burn off or get damaged, have been eliminated entirely. It's a leaner, tougher setup built to survive the harshest parts of flight. Performance-wise, Raptor 3 is a beast. Each engine produces around 280 tons of thrust at sea level, with a specific impulse of 350 seconds, and weighs roughly 1,525 kilograms, or about 1,720 kilograms with all vehicle-side hardware included. But SpaceX isn't stopping there. According to Elon Musk, the team is targeting 300 tons of thrust per engine which would give a fully loaded Super Heavy stack of 33 Raptors an incredible 10,000 tons of combined thrust at liftoff. As SpaceX transitions to Starship version 3, the company is also reconfiguring its launch infrastructure to match the upgraded vehicles. Construction is ramping up at Pad 1 in Starbase, while near-term missions shift over to Pad 2 to keep the launch cadence steady during the heavy construction phase. The first big step in the rebuild was the demolition of the original Mechazilla system, the massive launch tower with its iconic chopstick arms used to catch and stack boosters and ships. Crews have already taken down the old arms and removed the long wire rope that lifted and lowered the chopstick carriage. The next generation Mechazilla that replaces it is expected to take cues from the design on Pad 2, which features shorter, faster-moving arms and extended stabilizers for better control and alignment during catches. Looking ahead, SpaceX's plans for Starbase include expanding southward to build a new flame trench at Pad 1 and adding a larger deluge tank farm. Eventually, that could mean replacing the current water deluge system with a more powerful one, similar to the setup at Pad 2, to handle the immense acoustic and thermal loads of Starship launches. Beyond Texas, SpaceX is also investing heavily in the Florida Space Coast. The company is preparing to operate dual Starship pads, with modifications underway around Launch Complex 39 
39A and potential activity at LC-49 if SpaceX decides to develop that site. At the same time, Roberts Road, the company's nearby production and integration facility, is being expanded to boost Starship manufacturing and turnaround capacity. These aren't just cosmetic upgrades, they're essential to the airline-like launch frequency that SpaceX envisions for Starship. Supporting orbital refueling operations and the deployment of larger, higher-throughput Starlink satellites will require rock-solid ground systems, high-capacity flame and water suppression, rapid turnaround shipyard operations, and a flight software stack capable of processing high-frequency data to fine-tune everything from engine restarts to guidance precision and thermal protection wear. Starship version 3 isn't just a visual refresh. It's been purpose-built for orbital rendezvous, docking, and the transfer of super-chilled methane and oxygen. Pulling that off is an enormous engineering challenge that demands precise fluid management in microgravity, zero boil-off cryogenic systems, and tight thermal control throughout the process. NASA has long identified on-orbit refueling as one of the key pacing items for its Artemis program, which aims to return humans to the moon. As part of its Human Landing System, HLS, initiative, NASA has awarded SpaceX more than $4 billion to adapt Starship for crewed lunar missions. The first human landing isn't expected until 2027, but getting there will require a ladder of increasingly complex demonstrations, autonomous docking, multiple tanker launches, and the successful transfer and verification of tens to hundreds of tons of propellant in orbit. NASA's mission architecture envisions as many as 10 tanker flights to fully refuel a starship for a single lunar landing, placing major demands on launch cadence, orbital logistics, and ground support systems. SpaceX's ability to reliably deliver heavy cargo, surface habitats, and life support infrastructure to the moon will be crucial for building a sustained lunar base and for testing the technologies that will eventually make Mars missions possible. For SpaceX, Starship remains the centerpiece of Elon Musk's long-term vision to make humanity a multi-planetary species. The logic behind it is straightforward. Large payloads and full reusability can drive down the cost of sending people and hardware to space by orders of magnitude. But Starship's impact could reach far beyond the Moon or Mars. Its enormous lift capacity and low-cost flight potential have the power to reshape everything from satellite deployment and planetary science to interplanetary logistics. Massive constellations, next-generation space telescopes, or deep space probes that once needed multiple launches could now fly in a single mission. The economics of access to orbit could change dramatically, opening the door for smaller nations, private companies, and universities to take on projects that were once reserved for major space agencies. In deep space science, the ability to launch heavier, more capable instruments could usher in a new era of exploration sample return missions to Jupiter's moons, or large-scale observatories stationed in distant orbits. And while the Starship program has faced its share of failures, explosions, and redesigns, its pace of progress is unmatched in the aerospace industry. Technical challenges remain, particularly in heat shield reliability, orbital docking, and rapid turnaround between flights. But SpaceX's iterative, reusable design philosophy continues to push the boundaries of what's possible in modern spaceflight.